Amen. Please be seated. Just a minute. It won't take me long. When y'all big folks get down and everything, it's all good. Ms. Ramos, you need to stay up here. Mr. McDougall. Miss Daisy. You knew it was just a matter of time. She'd be caught. Everything would come to light. Here it is. I want the young folks to see them because the three, along with Miss Alexia, I believe she's graduating as well. She's down in, in uh, Mobile. But these folks are graduating from high school. I know you in kindergarten think it can never happen, but it will. <laughs> Just keep studying, doing your work, and, and things will be good. We're so proud of y'all. This little lady, amen. Graduating from Strong High School, and uh, uh, Jacob and uh, Yvonne are graduating from Enterprise. And uh, I don't know what their plans are, but I understand that, that Jacob and Yvonne both have got music scholarships to Enterprise State. Guess where they got their training at? At the platform of Open Door Baptist Church. Amen. Amen. Miss Holly's going to take care of young ones. She does a good job of that, too. She helps in our nursery, and we're so proud for her. She is, uh, puts a lot of things in. That is her, yeah. Daisy, yeah. But she looks like Holly. But uh, Holly's on her all the time. They're close together. But we thank you for what you... I've got something for you. I want you to see this, young folks. Look, it's got your name on it. It is right. That's right. There is a check in the envelope along with a card and a few words of encouragement from your pastor. This is a card and a gift from Open Door Baptist Church because we love you, we thank you, and we couldn't be who we are without you making it happen. So I love you. God bless you. God bless you, my brother. My sister. God bless you. Y'all can go now. I'll get with y'all at a while and figure out the tithe on your check. We'll get you fixed up. But again, I, I thank you so much. Thank you for all. Is that for me? Okay. All right. Pass them out. You have not because you ask not. Amen? Keep passing. God bless you. Our kids are going to scoot out and we're going to move right ahead here with our preaching and uh, looking at God's Word together. I was staying with Miss Margie last night, kind of helping her. And I had an opportunity to, to share with the nurse about 2.30 the importance of being nice. <laughs> And don't talk loud and be short because folks are up here sick and, and you just need to behave. And she didn't come back, but I saw her at the drive through at McDonald's when I was getting my sausage and my hot cakes and I just waved. But uh, it's amazing. You know, love is a powerful thing. And uh, these kids, uh, I was thinking uh, of sharing a word, and I talked to Brother Mike this morning. I said, well, what do you want me to read for the scripture? He says, your granny's favorite chapter of Psalms would be wonderful, and that would be Psalm chapter 1. I said, well, I'm kind of using that this morning. That, see, that's the only reason you got to speak, William. Yes, sir. Brother Mike will be glad to know that going to the hospital brought some, 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 some religion and, and a little uh, political upheaval and just doing the right thing. It's so important, and I appreciate Brother William. He keeps us abreast of things, and uh, again, I appreciate the number of people who turned out, who went, because it doesn't take but one, you know, just one. One got prayer out of school. Just a couple got all this other mess turned around, and, and there's more with us than there are with them. You and God are majority wherever you're at, so don't ever give up. Don't ever quit. Don't ever think that you're insignificant because you are very important and uh, to be able to speak out and go. But I, I was wanting to share a few verses of scripture to our kids. Uh, again, it's a message to the church, but more especially uh, for our young folks. You got to have your notes. If you don't have your notes, you get all messed up. And oh, it's on the other side of the symbol. I get confused. That's my notes right there. But. Uh, But I thought, well, what, what would you, what could you title a message to some graduates who are going out? And I remember, I could not wait till I got my graduation diploma. And it was questionable. It was up to the last couple of days before they really let me know if I was going to make it. But uh, I was saying, well, I'll be through with this. I'll be on my own. And I want to encourage you, before y'all go off and get married to anybody, 
And if you're a boy, you do marry a girl. You know, and if you're a girl, you marry a boy. That's just the way that works. But before you go, you pray long and hard about that. I graduated in uh, May of 1972, changed jobs in September of 72, went from that 85 cent to the buck 35 an hour, and I told my wife and my girlfriend at the time, Becky, I got to making real money, we'd get married, and there we were. Married on November 22nd of 72. So a lot of things happened in 72. But 44 years later, I can look back and thought, boy, people are right. You don't know what you're doing. <laughs> and I didn't. But I want to encourage you to keep pressing on. You be all you can be. You study hard. And you put yourself to, you know, to the task of, of putting first things first. And if I could give you any advice, and, and, and I know that you three love the Lord Jesus Christ. I knew that he's the center of your life. And I know there's a lot of folks who pull on you from different directions, trying to get you to get involved in this and get involved in that. But I want to just encourage you to be true to your first love. I, I'm just so grateful. I, I remember Jacob's mom telling me, he says, I'm so glad this has been years ago that y'all let Jacob play up here. We're so glad that Jacob plays up here. And I, I think about Yvonne and I appreciate what you, and all of you folks that do so many things in this church. And we've got a great bunch of people. And, uh, and I, I'm more concerned about quality than I am quantity anytime. And you know, we got some quality people, and I appreciate you. And, and God will add to our number. I, I was thinking about Wednesday night as I got the call back that we'd had one person pray to receive Christ in the laundromat. And uh, you think, in the laundromat, they got time to talk. They ain't leaving their clothes. So you have time to talk to them. And I, the first time I had somebody carry me out, Brother Steve, to share the gospel was Wheeler Foshi. He's a professor at Auburn University, and he talked to me yesterday. He says, I'm up there, Big John, just want to know I'm here. I've seen you Thursday. I'm glad I'm here today. But I remember him carrying me to a laundromat, a Sessions laundromat, up on, off Main Street on Lee Street. I, had, I was wearing a suit back then when I worked, and I had on my suit. And he was there with his field jacket on, his Auburn hat, and a pair of Converse Snickers. And we're going there doing questionnaires about people's opinion on spiritual things. And I thought, this is something else. And I was so intimidated, and I was so afraid, you know. But time and time again, we had a chance to go and uh, be able to share the gospel. And then we started doing that here. So it's so important. So keep the first things first. Keep the main thing the main thing. Keep the Lord Jesus Christ on the throne of your life as you go. There's a few scripture verses, I think, that will be of some, some value as we have a chance to look at it. And I want you to look at Psalm chapter 1, being Brother, Brother Mike said that's what he was going to read from this morning. He thought that would be a good thing. Psalm chapter 1. And listen to old folks. I know we talk slow and we talk a lot. But listen, there's some wisdom to be gained. You see somebody with gray hair. Or if it's a woman that's got different colored hair. She, she still maybe has some years on her. But take time to listen. Because they've been through things. They've been places. And they can tell you stuff if you just listen. But then my grandmother, I was talking to her about being afraid after my granddaddy died. I said, I, I know you're all by yourself. And I know you must be afraid in this big old house on not the most peaceful side of town in some way. She says, I may be alone, but I'm never by myself, Johnny. And that's when I asked her, I said, you have another man? And that's not a good thing to ask your aging grandma about that. She set me straight real quick. She says, no, the Lord Jesus Christ is with me always. And she told me that before she went to sleep at night, she quoted Psalm chapter 1. And I said, which verse? She says, all of them. And I didn't even joke John 3, 16. Here my granny had memorized countless numbers of scriptures and a whole chapter in the book of Psalms. So it was important. But don't you listen to it because this has something to say to you. It said, How happy or blessed is a man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Be careful who gives you advice. You consider their outcome of their conduct. You look at their life. Do you think there's some admirable things in there? And looking hot don't mean you hot sometimes. And going with the crowd don't mean it's right sometimes. So he says, you be, be watchful. Do not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Well, who's the wicked? Anybody that does not acknowledge the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of God is not first and foremost in their life. The scripture says in the book of Hebrews, be careful. He's talking to Christians. Be careful. There's no wicked, unbelieving heart found in you. So love the Lord God with all your heart. Walk in his ways. He says, don't stand in the path of sinners. You ever notice how you'll, you'll be walking along and you'll stop? You'll be seeing something, you'll stop. And after a while, you'll be drug up a chair and took a seat. <laughs> he says, don't stand in the path of sinners. Don't be around them. Get away from them. He says, don't sit in the seat of scoffers. You become like that what you hang around. The scripture says, don't be fooled. 
that bad company corrupts good morals. People will, will drag you down, and, and we, you know, it's not because uh, our kids don't know better. They've heard it from their youth up, from their, their, their children ministry. They've heard it. They, many of them were in Awana. Many of them memorized the Word of God. They've hit it in their heart. But look what he says. He says some things don't do. He says not to walk in the counsel of the wicked. Don't stand in the path of sinners. Don't sit in the seat of scoffers. But, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And I would encourage you to make the Bible your most read book. It's more important than any other class that you'll take. And if you'll seek him first, we'll see him in just a minute. He'll make your path straight. So honor him. Be in the law of the Lord. He says meditate in his law day and night. I find myself just mulling over scripture. I just wrote these down the other day as we were going to Montgomery. Edwin Roberts was driving and uh, Diana Cruz was with us and uh, and then uh, Brother Andy was with us and, and I'm just reading, I was reading scripture to him. I was just writing things down that came to my heart that they were so important. I'm not going not to preach them all these today but I'm just telling you. The first one was Zechariah 4, 6. It says, not by strength and not by might but by spirit says the Lord. Another verse that says that the, the, the wrath of man does not accomplish the righteousness of God. It says in the book of Proverbs, when a man's ways are pleasing unto the Lord, he calls even his enemies to be at peace with him. So there's some, there's some nuggets in here that you need to build your life on. There's some cornerstones, some anchors that, that will keep you from falling in the muck and the mire. He says, meditate in his law day and night. Listen, he says, he will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in its season. You're fruitful. If Jill's mom and dad were here, they came many times when they were able to travel more, and they said they'd come about every other year, and they said every time he comes, that preacher preaching on John 15. He said, Jesus says, apart from me, you can do nothing. But if you're engrafted into me, you can do great things. And you will continue to bear fruit, much fruit, and your fruit will abide. So it's so important to keep firmly planted in the water of the Holy Spirit. He says, and its leaf does not wither, and whatever he does, he prospers. How about that? <clears throat> Don't you want to prosper? I do. You know, John uh, was praying for Gaius over in the epistle of John. He says, I pray that you prosper, and you be in good health, just as your soul prospers. So if our health... <laughs> If our health depended on us reading the Word of God and applying that, which it does, it's a wonder that more of us ain't in the hospital are messed up. And whatever he does, he prospers. I pray that you're that you grow spiritually, that you allow God's Holy Spirit to, to work in and through you will make you awesome. I think about Peter, uh, Peter Neem. He came here, his mom sent him up here to Uncle, Uncle William and they needed to be able to, uh, Jade to help him because he was getting in trouble on the streets. And it was in Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, wherever. They, he was he had, he wearing the sagging britches and the crazy haircuts and had the limp going on and all those sort of things. But he went with a group of us guys to a promise keepers meeting in Atlanta, Georgia, Atlanta, I believe, and it was raining, set out in the rain. Birmingham, sat in the rain, and that brother got saved as a result. Of that and the young man is is teaching veterinary medicine, I guess you know, and uh, I guess he's sending the check back home to y'all now, probably getting the check. But uh, don't remember your kid. Don't forget your parents' kids when you graduate. That uh, they help you get where you're at. Uh, send them a little love often every now and then. Just kind of touch things up. It'll be good. But you know, and he goes on in verse four. He says, "The wicked are not so, but they're like chaff, which the wind dries away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the right." For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Right. You cannot prosper not doing it God's way. Well, I know some folks that's doing it. Well, Satan's powerful. Satan blesses folks sometimes to keep them out of the will of God. But I'm telling you, when it's all over and done, you know, the scripture said, <laughs> you remember the story in the book of Luke about the rich man and Lazarus? You know, the rich man had it going on, everything fine, didn't give God a second thought, everything was good. Didn't have time for Lazarus and his, his poor situation, wouldn't even let him have the crumbs that fell from his table. But they both died one day. And for those of you who think there's a holding tank somewhere that maybe your friends can pray you out of, uh, that scripture pretty well tears that up. It says that they died. It said the rich man lifted up his eyes in Hades. And it says, the angels carried Lazarus to the bosom of Abraham. And the 
rich man says, I see Lazarus over there, and is there any way that you could let him come and just put a drop of water on my parching tongue because it is hot in these flames down here? When people say hell is just a state of mind, Job will witness to you that hell is just the grave. But the rich man says, uh-uh, ain't nothing to that. This is a pool of fire, and it's hot down here. And he says, listen, he says, you had an opportunity. You had an opportunity. Well, if he'll just have somebody come back from the dead... He said, no, they already had that too. He said, so you're in the mess you're in. And then he had some good sense. So he said, would you please send an EE team over to my father's house? I've got five. didn't say it just like that. But he said, I've got five brothers, and I don't want them to end up in hell where I'm at. Would somebody go talk to them? He said, they got the prophets. they got the Psalms. They've got, they've got those folks. They need to listen to them. And people said, I just didn't have a chance to repent. The scriptures tell us in Romans chapter 1 that we're all without excuse. That God has revealed himself through the things that have been made, through his creation. It screams Jesus everywhere you go. There's no way the things could happen as they've happened. It was a, 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 a definite design, and it was through Jesus he spoke this world into existence. So don't forget those things, guys. And I want you to listen with me over here in, in, in uh, Proverbs chapter 3. You probably could get Jill to quote this. It's her favorite verses, some of them. But in the third chapter of the book of Proverbs, read the book. Just read the book. Uh, and I'm telling you that if you make it a daily diet on reading the book of Proverbs, read you a psalm, maybe about three or four psalms a day in the book of Proverbs, just kind of move through. If you're a new Christian, get into the book of John. Just read you a chapter a day and ask God's Holy Spirit to explain it to you. And I promise you he'll do that. But in this, is this chapter here, the third chapter of the book of Proverbs, it says, My son, do not forget my teachings, but bind them. Let your, let your heart keep them, my commandments. But let your heart keep my commandments. For Listen, for length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Who wouldn't want to do that? The word of God. The commandments of the Lord. She was instructing her son. says, don't forget it. Hang on to it. And look what he says in verse 3. He says, do not let kindness and truth leave you. It's always important to be kind. I don't care how busy you are. Stop and do a random act of kindness. Love people. Share with them. He says, don't let kindness leave you. You ain't grown yet. By the time y'all get about 21, 22, 23, 24, you'll say, man, because these last years, I know none of you, but some teenagers say, I've got the craziest mom and dad. They ain't got a lick of sense. They don't understand who I am and what I can do. They understand very well. They've been there, done that. But you get a little older, you say, mom and dad were smart. I should have listened. <laughs> I wouldn't be going through the stuff. I'm telling you, Ask, follow, let their wisdom become yours. It says, bind them around your neck, write them on the tablets of your heart so you'll find good favor and good report in the sight of God and man. The scripture says it's desirable in a man is his diligence. You know, your, your kindness, your diligence. He says, put it there, your faithfulness. They will look at that and see things happen. People will pick up on the fact that you're a Christian. Your spirit should bear witness with their spirit. The only way it wouldn't is because you're just living in rank sin and the Spirit of God is quenched within you and he's asking you to please get right with the Lord Jesus Christ and his Spirit can flow through you as you do that. He said in verse 5, he says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. It's amazing this thing called hearts. You remember the commandment the disciples went to Jesus in chapter Matthew. He says, What's the greatest commandment? We know we had those ten and then tried the religious folks got through it. We had some over 600. So which is the greatest one? Which one do we keep? If we got to just pick out one, what would it be? You remember the rich young ruler that came to Jesus? He says, I want to know how I can get in on what you've got going on. He says, keep the commandments. He says, I have from my youth. He lied. He says, Jesus, knowing that he was rich, he says, won't you go give what you got to the poor and come follow me? Ah. Uh, he said he was very rich and he just walked away. That my worldly riches are more important to me than spiritual riches. So he found out real quick kind of where he stood. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. When Jesus gave him the disciple, he says, what's the greatest commandment? He says, you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with your whole heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and your neighbors yourself. You know, it's right there. It's just, just a matter of hiding the word in your heart, working and walking with that. Do not lean on your own understanding. How many times have you said, I thought this would work out? 
I know what the instructions say, but I thought I could do it differently. How many times have we taken things back apart we put together because we didn't follow the instructions? You get a setback. Same thing in the Word of God. Your, your operator's manual, your dash 10 for the military folks, it's just you need to follow the protocol. Or you'll end up dead somewhere. <laughs> you'll end up hurt. So do what it says do. All your ways acknowledge him. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your understanding. All your ways acknowledge How would you acknowledge him? Well, you need to consult him. Not insult him, but consult him. Lord, I'm just saying, help me with this. I'm having a little trouble with this, Lord. Should, should I go in this direction? Should I see this happen? Should I get involved in this? Should I make this move? Should I go to this school? Should I, God, what would you have me do? And something hard for us to do, and our kids had not had a lot of time. We got some of the busiest kids in the world. Between school, between band, between soccer, between singing, between this, between, I mean, they're, it's just, they're just running all the time. And your parents are tired. Can I get an amen? Yeah, you are. I'm telling you. You know, and what if we had, had Bible practice three days a week? Bible drills on Saturday. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh -huh. We don't want to drive them crazy. You won't go crazy memorizing the Word of God. You'll be okay. But just think about it. Take, it, says it takes time to be holy. He says, and if you acknowledge Him, He will make your path straight. He says, do not be wise in your own eyes. A company in verse in the book of Proverbs, it says, the first to state his case seems just until he's examined by another. That's what's happened with the Southern Poverty Law Center and Jig, and the other little Jig folks. Judicial, judicial, they've made a statement. But they're soon, I mean, they already found out there's an open letter saying that this ain't right. We ain't standing for it. We ain't going to do it. And we need to stick to our guns. I'm just telling you. You know, uh, that we're, we're, this is a, a government of the people, for the people, by the people. And we elected a man and we got a handful of folks that said, you're going to unelect him? I wouldn't think so. Something's got to change. It sounds very much to me like it was when, when Pilate says, you know, this is the time I'm going to turn somebody loose. Now I've got Jesus and we, we've already talked about him. I can't find he did anything. He, think, he, he said he was God, but listen, I don't know about all that. But he's done nothing wrong, but... I've got Barabbas. He's an insurrectionist. He's a murderer. He's a thief. And, and which one you want me to turn loose? Surely you want me to turn Jesus loose because he's done nothing. They said, no, crucify him and turn Barabbas loose. Politically correct group of people. They wouldn't make choices. Because, listen, they, Jesus was a, a, a thorn in their side. And they put some on his head. But he was... He, uh, facts are stubborn things. The truth will always set you free. It will make you miserable before it does. It will always set you free. He says, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. There's some things. Speeding. Is that a sin? Yes, it's a sin. Putting on your seatbelt. Is that a sin? If you don't wear it when the law says you should, yes, that's a sin. You know, up to... I went back and read and a lot of the things that, that spoke and, and said in our, our laws back in the early 50s. It says homosexuals can't hold certain positions because they're unstable in their thinking. I'd have to say amen to that. Anybody that can't figure out who that... We don't get on that this morning, Pastor. But anybody who can't figure that out has got a problem. Brother Ford had shared at that meeting, I've got a four-year-old that knows more than the Supreme Court does. I've got a four-year-old that knows more than the Judicial Inquiry Committee. She knows the difference between a boy and a girl. A man and a woman and a daddy and a mommy. She's smarter than four years old. But it gets back again. If you don't read it, where's the law came, come from? I was reading on the wall. It says it's the moral law, the Word of God. It's where we got our laws from. Political correctness is what a bunch of sinners got together and said, we think we're going to do this because we like to sin. We like to participate in the junk that's around us. So we're going to, we're going to change this deal. Uh, God's law doesn't change. Majority rule doesn't change it. So... Always follow the Lord, young folks. Fear the Lord, turn away from evil. It will be healing to your body and refreshment to your bones. Mo Grand lead she was about 96, and most of that time she did for herself. The last couple of years she was in a nursing facility. But she loved Jesus. She loved the Word. She read the Word. She talked about the Word. The Word was part of her. And she shared it with her children and her grandchildren. How important is that? The Word of God. He says, honor the Lord from your wealth. That means that you put God first in what you get. The scripture says that a tithe of your income 
You know, if you got $1,000, that would be $100. And if you got $500, that would be $50. And if you can't figure that out, you'll probably never get a million. It's all in the zeros. <laughs> but God says, if you're faithful in the little things, I'll put you in charge of some greater things. So honor him and put him first. He says, from the first of all your produce, so your barns will be filled with plenty, your vats will overflow with new wine. My son, do not reject the discipline of the Lord or loth his reproof. You better be glad that God interrupts your schedule. Y'all listen to me? And what you're doing? Are you listening? He says, don't regard lightly the discipline of the Lord. The 12th chapter of, of Hebrews says that God disciplines us because he wants to us to share in his holiness. And if you've got children, you discipline them because you want them to live. You want them to grow up. You want them to see life. So it's so important. He says, do not reject the discipline of the Lord or loth his reproof. For whom the Lord loves, he reproves, even the father and his son whom he delights. Uh, and I love my son. I appreciate him. He, he respects me. We talk. We share. We're the best friends. But I taught him early on that I, I was daddy. It wasn't about him. It was about what I chose and the way we were to go. That's when he was a kid. His kids do the same thing. I said, well, Jack, Pop had his wallet while ago. Got him out of one. And Max says, give me one. So he gave him one. He'll catch him later, charge him two for that one. But he put it in the offering plate. He loans his daddy money, but he charges him interest when, when, he, when he does. But teaching our kids how to manage their money. And you do the best you can do in your school because you, got, you may have scholarships, but there's still mom and dad's money that's helping kind of keep you going. You're still eating under their table, coming home at their house. Probably got insurance on your cars. All these things you need to do. And honor the Lord first and foremost, and, and God will do a good work in your life. And then I want you to look at uh, one other verse in, in Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua judges is over. You got in your Bible? I think it's in mine somewhere in here. Joshua chapter 1, verse 7 and 8. Brother Mickey and I memorized this years ago. I had a fellow challenge me to memorize scripture. And he came by my house three days a week or called me. How you doing on your scripture? And I thought, man, why don't you go home and leave me alone? How important it is. But our kids, and, you know, it's, it's so important. In, in the Awana, I'm so glad that Maddie's in Awana in Williamsburg in a Methodist church, but that she memorizes scriptures as a cubby. Four and five, you know, word scriptures, but she knows it, and her daddy has to study with her. He's smart, but he ain't that kind of smart, but he's working on it. To know that God made the heavens and the earth. God made the animals. God made me, and Jesus loves me. So important. But in the seventh verse of, of Joshua chapter 1, he says, Only be strong and very courageous. Never wimp out, guys. I mean, you know, I know y'all are aggressive with your playing, uh, whether it's volleyball, whether it's playing instruments, whether it's performing. You do your very best, and you work hard at that. Our ladies and gentlemen devote their time to be the very best they can. This band practices. They're here on Wednesday night. They're here early on Sunday morning. They just don't get up here and say, well, let's just do a little something. See how this comes out. They might sometime, but that ain't the rule. The rule is we're going to do our very best because it's for him. We ain't entertaining this bunch of people, but we're playing for him. If you happen to get a blessing out of it, yay. But we're worshiping the Lord. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left so that you may have success wherever you go. How are you going to have success? In the word of God. Hide it in your heart. When you're squeezed, it's going to come out. Won't be no hells and dams, but it'll be, thus saith the Lord. It'll happen. Hide it in your heart. Make it work. He says, you have success wherever you go. And whatever you're doing, if you honor him first. And then verse 8, he says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. That means you're never to speak it. No, that means you should always have it on your lips. That you're always talking about it. You've got a track handy. You're willing to share with whoever you see because it's so important. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. Ponder on it. It should be the last thing you go. When you go to bed, you should read the Word, memorize Scripture. If you're walking the, the, watching The Walking Dead or listening to Little Wayne, you're probably going to have nightmares. But if you'll read the book and you'll pray, I think you'll have some pretty good sleep. Things will be okay. 
Meditate on it day and night so that you be careful to, to do, brother said a while ago, the book of James. He says, a human knows the right thing to do and he does it not to that man, it's sin. He says, don't be a forgetful hearer, but be an effectual doer of the word. He says, be careful to do according to all that is written in it. We don't just take out bits and pieces. I'm telling you, in John 12, 48, and these folks need to understand this, that are making all these hulas and, and all this junk. Jesus says, I didn't come into the world to judge the world. I came into the world, the world might be saved through me. But he said, there's one in the end that will judge you. It's the word that I have spoken. Thus saith the Lord. Well, we voted. It don't matter if you voted. It don't change it. He says, the heavens and the earth shall pass away, but the word of God will abide forever. Forever. It's probably got it neon in hell. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.36 is probably there too. He who has a son has life. But he who does not obey the son shall not see life but the wrath of God abides upon him. They say, oh my God, that's true. There's probably another verse that says there's a way that seems right unto man but its end is death. That's probably up there in pretty bold letters. Jesus says, I love you. I love you. You had to trample over the blood of the cross to get where you went. More times than a few, I drew you. I tapped on your heart. I, I spoke to you. I sent people to you. But yet you rejected me. He says, that, he says if you'll do this, he says, for, for then you will make your way prosperous and you will have success. That's pretty good. I like that, brother. Second Timothy 1.7, before you leave, I want to tell you something. A lot of fears. You think what, what really fear is when you start paying your own apartment rent and you get your first light bill. That'll rock your world. I remember our first house payment was $69. Now keep in mind, it's about, about $35 an hour, so you know, $69 is a pretty good bit of money. Milk back then was probably $0.59 cents a gallon. You know, gas was about $0.30 cents a gallon. Phone bill was about 6 bucks. Didn't know what a cell phone was. Had no laptop. We had the, had the, the cameras, you know, you clicked it, thing shot out, and you rubbed it real good so the picture would come up on it. And it faded away after a while. <laughs> But remember, you know, put him first. But in, in 2 Timothy 1.7 says, God has not given us a spirit of fear. So if you're ever afraid, you recognize where that came from. There's a difference between having fear and having an awesome reverence for who God is and recognizing, God, I can't do this if you don't do it through me. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love. Love. If you don't love, you don't know God. He says of power. He says, I've given you power to be my witnesses at Enterprise, Daleville, Ozark, Auburn, Andalusia, wherever you might go, in a sound mind or discipline. Discipline yourself. You know, John Wayne, I told you, we've been on, he, he started earlier than I did. He ain't drinking no Dr. Peppers, which that's holy water. He ain't drinking no Dr. Pepper. He don't drink no sweet tea. And every time I'd sit with him, I'd get me a sweet tea. He said, I'm, I'm just drinking water, Daddy. I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting rid of this. I ain't going to be a fat. I'm going to get rid of this stuff. And I said, all righty. So I started drinking water. And I just like water. Water's good. It saves you about a buck ninety sometimes. You can get more chicken if you drink water. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's economical. And, and, and your belt, you can tighten up a few links on that. And, you know, the scales don't scream when you stand on them. Get off! God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a love, power, and a sound mind. If you honor him first and you walk in his ways, you'll see great things. Just quickly, so my, my message would be to you would be charge. Charge. You've got all you need to conquer this world. Amen. See, the babies know that. Amen. I thought about charge and I thought about seeing it's Christ alone. Him first and foremost. I may not have spelt this right. Just play along with me if I didn't mess it up. And I thought about H and I thought, hallelujah, I've been set free. Hallelujah. I thought about the eight, Almighty God. And when you've got an Almighty God, there's none like Him. That's right. So, I mean, who, who you, what are you afraid of? What's going to overtake you? Greater is He who is in you than He who is in the world. And then I thought about the R, and I thought about the resurrected Lord. Go back and read the first chapter of the book of Ephesians, verse 18. Open the eyes of our heart that we might understand and know the hope of the calling that the resurrection power that raised Christ from the grave is in us. And if his power defeated all hell and took the keys away and slammed the door behind them, I mean, you know what? Don't worry about anything. But I, I thought about the G and I thought about our glorified Savior. 
I'll tell you, I sinned Thursday. I was up there and we were listening. I had some good speakers. I wanted to get a hold of that microphone. I sure did. But we have some good speakers. But at the end, much wiser than I, and I'm so glad they were there. But the Lord kind of spoke to my heart that I need to call this group of people to get on their knees on, the, on those steps. You know, Miss Lilla, the steps across there in front of that place. We need to pray. And I hesitated before I, I kind of asked them to do that. And real quickly, things began to fall apart and people went in different directions. But what's more important than praying on the, on the courthouse steps? And there were prayers going up, no doubt. But I, but I, I shared with a friend that, that was kind of in charge. I said, I, I, I sinned by not calling that, but I will be back. So pray and believe. But the glorified Savior, and then I thought about the, the everlasting life, the eternal life that God's given us. You cannot lose it. You cannot, you cannot be taken away from you. The Lord says, I've, I've got you in my hand. There's nobody that's going to pluck you out of my hand. You be faithful and put him first. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. I thank you for your word. I thank you that it's, a, it's sharper than a two-edged sword. It cuts coming and going. I thank you, Lord, that you promised that your, that your word is going to endure forever. That your word is what's going to judge us in the end. It doesn't matter what we think. It doesn't matter what we like about it or don't like about it. Your word is going to judge us in the end. And Father, we're going to stand upon that. They're not going to be able to point at this preacher and say he wasn't all he's supposed to be. Uh, this deacon wasn't all he was supposed to be. And this Sunday school teacher, she wasn't all she's supposed to be. Because each one of us had to understand that we've not been all that we're supposed to be. But Father, we ask you to fill us with your spirit to work in and through us. Father, help us to walk in the path that you've laid for us. And Father, I pray for our, for our graduating Youth, I pray, Lord, for those who are yet coming along, our children, as we share the Word of God with them, as we watch them grow, as we watch them become masters of your Word and be mastered by your Word, the great things will happen. Lord, I pray for the brokenhearted here this morning. I pray that your healing power will be on those who are sick. I pray for financial blessings for those who are faithful. But, Lord, if they're robbing you, they need to understand that it won't get no better until they honor you with the first fruits of what you have given us. But, Father, I just pray that nobody leaves here today without knowing you personally. Your scripture says, if we will acknowledge you with our mouth, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Believe in our heart that it would cause us to be right with you, cause us to walk in a right relationship. So, Father, have your way during this invitation. May souls be saved. May the prisoners be set free. May the blind see, Lord. May those who are lame be healed. And may those who are downtrodden be raised up. Fill us, Father. Use us this morning. As Satan is cast aside and bound, has no rule or right in this place, that your Holy Spirit is ministering right now and right here. Don't let us walk away. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us stand, please. If you need to come pray, this altar is open. I'm telling you, prayers where the actions at. I can pray for you, but you need to pray. Over the mountains and the sea, your river runs with love for me. And I will open up my heart and let the healer send me free. Won't you come? I'm happy if you have a need, this is a house of prayer. And I will do God said to pray and seek his face. For I will always sing of when your love came down. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love. Think about it. I could sing no love like it. Love he loves you no matter ever. what. He puts no ifs or buts I in front of you. He says, I love you. Love Will you receive that love? Over he has life for you if you'll simply receive it. He says, life and death are in the power of the tongue. And I Choose Jesus. I Choose life I eternal. Choose prosperity and blessings by honoring Him in all that you say and do. And I will daily lift my hands For I will always sing of when your love came down Amen. Thank you, Lord I can sing of your love forever I can sing of your love forever I can sing of your love forever I could sing of your love forever. Oh, I feel like dancing. It's foolishness, I know. When the world has seen the 
the light. They will dance with joy like we're dancing now. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your Sing of your love forever. I can sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love forever. I could sing of your love. You know, the scripture says, how long will you halt between two decisions? Joshua put it out. It says, you're going to serve the father, the gods of your fathers across the river. Are you going to, but it says, me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to put him first. I'd encourage our young folks, I'd encourage you as adults to make a decision. The I read somewhere, it says, the, 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 the roads of the world are paved with flat squirrels that could not make a decision. You got to go left or right. You got to do it quick. If you don't, you'll end up getting run over. Amen. <laughs> That's maybe a lot. Really, wasn't good for Sunday morning. But it, you think about it. You got a squirrel in the road. He can. I mean, if he just go left or right, things are good. He dodges, and one of those sixteen-inch tires gets him every time. So you make a decision in your walk for the Lord to go in the right direction. Don't you be a flat squirrel on the highway. Amen. Amen. Kenny, yes, sir. would you close us in a word of prayer? And uh, we appreciate y'all. Thank you for. Leading us in worship and praise this morning. Thank you for what you do. I know you got a son that's going to be moving out. Both of them moving out now. They're graduating. You pray. Go ahead. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you for this word today. We just thank you for bestowing the many blessings on us, Heavenly Father. And we just want you to lay a special hand on, on all the graduates, Heavenly Father, that they may um, you know, find their way, find their way in life, and just continue to do what you would have them do, Heavenly Father, and just to show others that um, they are Christians and they do stand for you, Father God, as they do not succumb to um, peer pressures. And we just, just want to strengthen them. We just want to lift them up. As we go today, Father God, let us all just take heed in the word and that we share with others and just show them also is that the Christian way of life, Father God, and the teachings that we learn from your word are the way that we need to live today, Heavenly Father, to strengthen us in our beliefs and strengthen us to just have the faith that we need to get through today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.